Isaiah, the 44th chapter, beginning with verse 3, and it reads, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessings upon thine offspring. Verse 4. And they shall spring up as mong the grass, as willows by the water courses. Let me read it again. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. This is part two in the three-part series entitled Divine Refreshing. Divine Refreshing. You may be seated. Divine Refreshing. I want you to understand that with rebound, with our bounce back comes refreshing. <coughs> refreshing is necessary because of a dryness that occurs within our soul, within our spirit. And so the word says, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. Why? Because there's a dryness that is within us and we have become barren. Our ground can become hydrophobic and dehydrated and causes us to become thirsty or dry and barren. In fact, when we are in this place, sometimes our walk with God can become stale. Our relationship with God becomes dry. And so then we find ourselves in a place where we're not experiencing the freshness of God. And so it produces in us an anomaly. It causes an enigma to arise within us. And that is, how can I be dry with people but yet fresh with God? Because sometimes our dryness arises because of the trials, of the storms, of the adversity, of the challenges that show up. We, we become dry with people because of the derogatory situations and conditions that manifest in our life. We become dry in our prayers. We become dry in our worship. We, we don't really want to speak to people because people have hurt us. And so it causes us, Miss Cookie, to sometimes want to be dry with people, but it's hard to be dry with people and get fresh with God. That's what some of us attempt to do. We, we try to shun the people that have abandoned and rejected us. We, we try to move and dislodge and dislocate ourselves from situations, even from memories and philosophies and ideologies. We try to abandon them, but yet we find that when we attempt to do that, we find ourselves distant from God. Uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. And so then it's hard to stay close to God from his people. And so then because we tend to have this situation when God sends us to new places, when God sends new people in our life, the fear and anxiety that comes from the former people of situations prevent us from establishing the true relationships of the new people that God sends. Because 
the last person I trusted hurt me. It's hard for me to love because the last person I loved abused me. It's, it's hard for me to submit to the last leader because the last leader manipulated me. So when God sends me to a new place, it's hard for me to dislodge, it's hard for me to disconnect from that mindset and yet connect to the new place. And so this dryness begins to forge itself within me. And so I want to show you this morning, there are six signs of spiritual dryness. Because sometimes we don't know we'll dry because our actions stay the same. Sometimes we don't know that we'll dry because my change has subtly evolved. In other words, I didn't come to become suspicious overnight. I gradually moved to that place. Uh, oh, my anxiety didn't reach the place uh, of where it is now. But we may be. And so one of the signs is negative thinking. Mm. When you try, your thinking becomes negative. In other words, we falter in our ability to resist and to cast down imagination. We, we, we lack the abilities when we're dry to be able to cast down these destructive thoughts. To remove these destructive emotions uh, uh, that make me want to cut you. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. I'm coming to you, David. Yeah. Uh, when, when you dry, it's hard, Lady Benton, it's hard to, to, to resist the temptation uh, to cut you out. Yeah. Uh, Y'all don't want to be real in this place. This, this is my dry. This fabric. Uh, there are times when, when, you, when you dry, you don't understand that you're serving not because you're motivated to serve, but you're serving because of the obligation That's to it. serve. That's it. Uh, some people show up to church because they have to show up. Yeah. Uh, that's when you dry. Uh, yeah. Some people sing because they have to sing. And they don't Because you can serve dry. Yes. Yes. Okay, let me break it down to you. Yes. You, you. You ever get mad with somebody, Kim, and when they talk to you, you answer them, but your, your answer go dry. Yes. Come on, yes. uh, I got a witness, so they say they, they become never short. Yes. How you doing? Fine. You want something to eat? No. <laughs> See, that's how you know when there's some dryness in you. It's because you are now saying things out of a place that, not, that does not come from a place of joy. That's right. The third thing is because of that is that our faith, our joy, is no longer infectious. That's how you know you're dry. Uh -huh. 
is that when we've lost the joy of our salvation, which is the secret of our divine strength. And so when you try, watch this Nick, you tend to lack the abilities to inspire or to motivate anyone else. In other words, Nick, they begin to influence you. And so when you drive, you lack the possibilities of influencing anyone to come and to reap the benefits of where you are. The fourth thing, that when I'm in this drive of barren places, God feels different. He feels distant to me. See, this is how, because let me talk to the theologians in the house for a second. I got some theologians here. See, one of the things, because Lady Benton, it's hard for the mature saint to really uh, see this in their life because they see how they are not only doing things that they've always done, and so it's hard to pinpoint that. Yeah. But this is how you know, Elder John, when that dryness shows up, is that when you look at the Word of God, and you cannot glean the rhema out of the Word. Mm. See, have you ever opened up your Bible and your Bible didn't say nothing to you? That's when you're in a dry place. Uh, that, that when you look at the Word, that you, you understand the logos of the Word. Yes, yes. But I cannot ascertain the rhema yes. of the Word. Yes, yes. This is how you know, saints, to my theologians, that you are in a dry place. And can I take it just a step further? And when you're in that place, watch this, Lady Benton, the attempt is to go back to a former place where I used to glean from that field. Oh my God. What are you saying, man of God? I go back to a former word. I go back to a former vision. I go back to a former revelation to see if I can draw down, if I can squeeze, if I can harness out of that word the same power that I once had, the same motivation that I once had. Yes, yes. And so this is why when you're in a dry place, you open up the scriptures and the scriptures don't talk back. Yes, yes. You may be in a dry place. Yes. The fifth thing, the fifth thing is that your spiritual life is in a rut. Yes. Hmm. In other words, when you start reading the Bible, not because of your passion, but because of the obligation or the responsibility. In other words, reading the Bible becomes mechanical <coughs> to you. And so then when you read the Bible, not only can you not glean the rhema out of the word, you cannot pull any truths out of the word when you are dry. And so then you're no longer reading the word for the purpose of the word giving you life. You're reading the word because this is what I always do. This is what I always done. And so then your life is in a rut. Your spiritual life is in a rut. You're going through the motions, uh, uh, but there's no change in yes, your life. Yes, yes. This is how you know you may be in a dry place. Yes. Uh, let me give you one more. Huh? Giving while empty or weary. Oh my God. Giving while you are empty or weary. See, one of the things that you have to be careful of is that when you are, when you give when you are empty, is that you have to understand, Kathy, that your praise it's no longer praise. Mm. See, when you're empty, Lady Bitch, and your praise is just singing. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, like I'm hearing yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, when you when you when you when you when you pray, when you're giving while you're empty, your 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 singing, your worship is just singing, it's not fellowship. Yeah. This is how you know this shot that you're in a dry place. Yeah. So that when I enter into worship, uh, yeah. I don't feel the fellowship with God. I know I'm in a dry place that when I begin to sing praises to God that I don't experience His presence. Oh my God. And so when we sing in the words, but there's no encounter. Uh, uh, we know it's in B flat, A sharp. Uh, we know how to sing I know in tenta or alto. Uh, we may even know the surprise.
fellowship. And so this is why it's so important, saints of God, that we understand that we can easily enter into this place. And so this is why, watch, in the first two verses of Isaiah the 44, he writes, Jacob, my servant in Israel, whom I've chosen, I made thee fall thee from the womb. And I will help you. So fear not, Jacob. Fear not, Israel, whom I've chosen. Why? Because the time of refreshing has come. What are you saying, men of God? In as much as you say or have figured out, Pastor, I'm in a dry place, then how am I going to get out? I come to serve notice that the time of refreshing has come. This is why he says, I'm going to pour water on you. I'm going to pour my spirit on your seed, my blessing on your offspring. In other words, the seed that has come through the edging. Oh my God. Oh my God. And they broke quickly. So what are you saying? 